Today I'm here at my friend Richard Hadid's woodworking shop and we're going to be cutting some planks from some sea grape that he had recovered um, after a storm knocked out a lovely old big tree. These are the logs in Richard's yard. We're going to select one and that will be used to cut the planks from. Anyway, this is woodworker Richie. So we set up a guide for the first cut. Once that's successful, then the log itself has a flat top and we can continue to slab off. The entire exercise took roughly an hour from the placement of the uh, first support board on top of the on top of the trunk right through to the cutting of the five pieces. You will see that we had to put a little wedge in the back. Um, this is just to make sure that as we cut the, the timber that it didn't fall on top of the um, on top of the saw and stick it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that is a piece of Now we get to the heart of the wood. That's what we want. And as it's exposed to sunlight, it will, it will bright up to a lovely orange. The, um, the actual sap is a uh, pink wood, while the center uh, tends to be ready brown to, to dark brown but the, the sap really is a beautiful pink and very, very very special of course what we were heading for was the center plank which you see us cutting off here and this is the first time I'm actually getting to use a center plank and here are the pieces that remain um, from the chainsaw exercise we're now going to take that one that we've selected from the center and thin it out into three inch width planks. We're using the radial arm saw to cut the plank in half, uh, which is just over three feet, which is the size that I tend to store and dry back home in the shop in Trinidad. We're going to make one board here and one board here. Remember my maximum width is three inches. So I would say we're going to clean it. Well, I will cut this with the band saw. Right. So you may have a shape here. That doesn't matter. And then we'll fix it later because I'm going to try and cut with the, with the, the um, yeah. rather than cut it straight. And then you could, you could always straighten it to suit. Right. So I'm going to take it over to this guy here. I'm just so envious of this nice big band saw. Wow, it just makes work so easy. We're trying to do as much of the general cleanup in Richard's shop um, simply because the equipment is just so much better than uh, what I have in my shop and just make life easier for me. Um, I'm just ripping this in half so we can make it small enough to work with. If you want to maximize the yield out of raw timber then you should spend time in the shop while the pieces are being cut and subdivided um, because it's only you will understand um, the opportunities that lie in a piece of wood like this. Then the genius of the experienced woodworker who has been taking timber and making planks from raw timber. Um, Richard has made up this jig which allows him to get a nice clean line on one side um, and then following that, he can uh, put it in the table saw and um, get a clean square parallel cut on both sides. Um, you're now starting to see the amount of work that goes into making planks for models um, and really makes us appreciate um, when we buy fully made up, fully dressed planks from our many suppliers. We are back home in the shop and we are going to put this wood um, to dry oh, for at least a year, maybe even longer. And that means it's subject to attack from powder post beetle or termites. So we're going to treat it. This is um, 
Ron Seals wood preservative, but you can use whatever is available in your area. And Richard, my great woodworker friend, um, reminds me to seal the ends of all of the planks, just the ends, because the ends will tend to dry out quicker than the rest of the wood and that will result in the wood cracking on the ends. So it doesn't matter what you put on it, you can put paint, epoxy, polyester resin, um, any, anything that will just seal the end and allow the wood to dry evenly. As time goes on, it's almost impossible a, to remember what type of wood it is and perhaps more importantly, what you did with the wood. So I tend to write everything down that I've done to the wood so that in time there's no question I know whether the wood's been treated and when it was cut and how long it's been drying. So the final part is really just to place it in the drying rack where I have all my other timber. This is some old sea grape I got on the 25th of January um, 2016 and it really is beautiful. This is some of the sap and it's, it's darkened slightly but it's still beautiful. Just to give you a little idea. It's a ready brown.